And I think that's that's huge, I think, from a communication standpoint to a patient, especially one that's suffering from maybe more of a chronic tendon issue, right, that's been maybe pre-existing for any given period of time. Um, from my own personal experience, just so that it's, I don't know, somewhat relatable, um, I had been, you know, injured my, my left patellar tendon in college. Um, it had really kind of plagued me for quite some time. I uh, never really felt great with squats, never really felt great with a variety of different uh, lower body patterns. Able to tolerate running, but either way, um, after a long period of time, it finally, the soreness and the discomfort finally went away with physical activity. And then um, just a couple years ago, I was playing some uh, men's league basketball, unfortunately. And uh, to, unfortunately. <laughs> it was fun, unfortunately for me that I hurt myself and couldn't play anymore, uh, at least for the last couple of days. But we came down the court and, uh, I was, you know, coming down the court and my foot kind of like slipped as I was coming to a stop. And so it did one of those, and on the second um, sticking point, I mean, the, the bottom of the sole stuck to the hardwood and then all my force went into my left left knee. And I don't feel like I, I fully resolved the tendon back when I initially injured it. And so it flared up pretty bad then. I mean, to the point where like I was asking some people to do some stuff for me with the patients and like <laughs> training groups that I had at that period of time just because it was so inflamed. Um, through my process and knowing that it was an old chronic injury of the, the mid belly of the patellar tendon, I knew it was going to be a long time. And for how long? I mean, it's hard to say. It's based on the individual, based on the severity of the injury. It doesn't really matter, but you can basically count on it being months. Months being a tendon issue because of the lack of blood supply, um, its ability to have to act like a fresh rubber band where it stretches and recoils constantly for speed of contraction or even force. And so in my own methodology, I use BFR constantly because it was a low threshold exercise that I could um, actually do without incredible amounts of pain and stimulate some growth and some hormone in the body to, to facilitate healing. And then after that, slow tempo work to develop some, um, some aerobic capacity within the local tissue, and then lots and lots of reps under low threshold, you gotta get some hypertrophy, and then finally some strength, and then eventually back to jumping, running, cutting, and everything else. That was the better part of about eight months. <laughs> For me personally, eight months. So, but I, I think those experiences are valuable. I'm not telling anyone to go hurt themselves, but I think there's some value there. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, do it in a constructive way. But um, I, I think I can speak to those things, and that's happened like a couple times in my body and for a variety of things. I think there's value to be able to kind of relate to that experience because, yeah, someone comes in with a patellar tendon issue and they're a young athlete and they're pushing themselves. I'm like, well, it's going to be slow because you're going to keep doing what you want to do. And you just have to recognize that. I mean, you're probably not going to hurt that much more. You're just going to aggravate it every so often, and these are the things you need to do, and you just kind of need to be patient because the adaptation phase is so damn slow.